joining us now to discuss BTC Price and more is Van Eck CEO Jan Van Eck. Hello there, Jan. Thanks for joining us. So Bitcoin is up. We've got some thin volumes. Uh, peers, tensions in Europe, uh, Eurasia are simmering down. What do you make of Bitcoin's short term price outlook? Sure. Um, you know, it's, it's I guess I'd look at it more from an intermediate or longer term outlook and try to place it within that context. I, I very much feel that Bitcoin has a maturing asset and it's one I'm very bullish on. I think it, go, it can go up to 25,000 in uh, in the next several years. I really think it's a competitor to gold. Having said that, I think in, in 2017, my colleague and I said, listen, there's a 90% downside to Bitcoin. It's still very immature and it's not widely enough held. That's really changed. I think last year was a dramatic year for Bitcoin. And we said, listen, the downside is probably 50% from its all-time highs. And, and it's hit that um, earlier this quarter. So I think looking forward to the rest of the year, uh, you know, maybe the uh, on the optimistic scenario, either we've seen the bottoms or maybe it tests one more time before the Fed actually starts raising rates in March. That's kind of the optimistic view. Um, you know, the more pessimistic view is that the financial markets generally will have trouble digesting these interest rate uh, hikes and, and the pullback on quantitative easing, and that we might start talking about the recession word um, later in the year. Uh, as, you, as you know, China is also a very important driver of the world economy and markets, and it's struggling to get through its real estate uh, issues. So... Um, I, listen, I, I've personally been been buying. I'm a big believer in the 50% pullback. I think we've seen that. I think that's where the support is. So that's uh, that's the summary. But um, you know, we we may we may have some turbulence throughout the rest of the year for the reasons I outlined. At the same time, in the United States, at least lawmakers are taking a hard look at stablecoins. There's a hearing happening right now in stablecoins. What do you think that may have in terms of an impact on Bitcoin and the crypto markets at large? Sure. I mean, you know, Van Eck has been around since 1955. We're a heavily regulated entity. Uh, we we talk with the SEC often. We have a futures-based Bitcoin product in the market, XBTF. Uh, but I, I'm really confused a little bit by the discussions of regulation around crypto um, and, and Bitcoin included. And stablecoins is something that I just wrote an opinion piece on. And, um, and and basically, the, the, what I said is stablecoins operate, the way they operate is very similar to ETFs, meaning they trade on exchanges. They're not guaranteed to track their investment target, right? So the price of Tether, for example, can fluctuate above and below uh, the $1 per Tether uh, benchmark. Uh, it's created in um, in big chunks, just like ETFs are. You can't go directly to an ETF company and buy uh, and buy it. So um, I, I think that's I'm, I'm kind of wondering why the SEC doesn't look at stablecoin and sort of say, why don't we try something similar type of regulation? Uh, you know, even even funnier in a, in a way, in an ironic way, is uh, the, the BlockFi regulation or the settlement with the SEC that came out yesterday on Valentine's Day. And and there, you'd think that if someone was, if you deposited something, Christine, right, and you got interest on it, uh, you'd go to the banking regulators, right? I mean, that feels more like a, like a bank. Um, and instead, it was the SECs that said, uh, you know, BlockFi was operating in terms of selling its securities and needed to be regulated through the SEC. So uh, we'll, we'll see. It's kind of like which. Which what does it really look like? I think a stable coin looks more like a private fund, uh, but we'll, we'll see how the regulators come out. I just really wanted to advance the discussion. Yeah, on the other side of that, folks are saying you know there were no victims in that case yet. Uh, investors were pretty happy with their investment return, and everyone you know seemed to get uh, you know a good. Uh, share of what they had expected, and yet uh, they're being dinged with a $100 million fine from, by the SEC. Um, I know you also have a Bitcoin spot can ETF. I, can I jump in on that? A Go ahead. Bit? Go ahead. I mean, I, I, I think that's part, part of the point, right? No one was talking, and this is why I want to get this dialogue going, no one was really talking about how BlockFi should be regulated, um, you know, what whether whether these interest products were securities or whether they should really be regulated by banks. Uh, Washington is itself very confused on this matter. 
And I think the SEC has interestingly put themselves in a box because they've actually frozen BlockFi's business in terms of new accounts or adding funds. And they're saying, go get a regulated uh, securities license from us. Uh, and that'll take 60 days. So we'll see if the SEC can turn it around in 60 days, uh, because otherwise they're really punishing a business even more, which they normally don't do with settlements. So, and you guys are interested in getting a Bitcoin spot ETF out there. That, that's kind of on the back burner. In the meantime, I don't know if you see that happening anytime soon. And you're launching a multi-token cryptocurrency fund. What can you tell us about that? And that's happening in Europe. Yeah, sure. I mean, while the U.S. is sort of going in circles on a, from a regulatory perspective, Europe is uh, getting very crypto friendly. We last week launched our eighth ETN in Europe, and they operate very similarly to ETFs in the U.S., except they use a note uh, as, a, as a legal entity. But um, this is our first multi-token uh, uh, ETN offering, and so it just invests in in the top five or six tokens right now. To make these products really investable and tradable, they have to have uh, wallet support. They have to, and they have to have regulatory approval. So right now, there's not a you know very many of these tokens that be included, but that's that's increasing by the day. Um, and and so uh, the options for European investors are really growing in a in a really healthy way.